On this episode of Doing the Most, we're brewing up the Anti-Imperial Stout. Moment brews and very sides, everything from meat to roast. Big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most. This recipe for an anti-imperial stout comes from Drinkers for Ukraine. They are raising awareness for the ongoing crisis happening in Ukraine by encouraging brewers around the world to all brew the same beer. It's a stout with a beet addition. And in the original recipe, the recommendation is to put roasted beets in secondary. We're doing something a little bit different here by putting some caramelized beet juice in at flame out. Please check out the link in the description for Drinkers for Ukraine and learn how to get involved. Brew this beer and make a contribution to a charity that matches your interests that serves the people of Ukraine. It's really awful what's going on there and anything we can do to raise awareness as a brewing community we should do. So without further ado, let's jump into the recipe. Due to the length of this recipe, I'm just going to put it up on the screen here and not read it for you. All of these amounts were converted from the original recipe by my friends at the Oklahoma City Brew Shop to a recipe for a five gallon volume. We began our brew day with eight gallons of water give or take. I like to use hot water when preparing for my mash because it comes out of my tap at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So it just takes a little bit of gas to get it going. Get our burner going. And we're bringing that strike water up to 166 degrees Fahrenheit. We're doing this recipe brew in a bag style. So after cutting the heat to the brew kettle, all of our grains go right in in the bag. Then we do a little stir, stir, stir to break everything up in there, make sure it's all well hydrated throughout the grains. And then I just like to tuck my bag off to the side here and place a lid on top. Our goal is to mash this kind of in the mid 150s. So we'll check the temperature throughout to make sure we're retaining that much heat. And of course, give it a little stir here and there. By the end of the mash, our temperature had dropped down to 151 degrees Fahrenheit, so not too bad. Then we pull our grain bag out and very carefully drain and press it to get all of the hot liquid out of there. And then the grains go in the yard for the chickens and the dog. Y'all see these boots and sweatpants? Tell me that's not a good look. Then we get our burner going one more time and bring that up to a nice rolling boil. After the hot break, our hop spider goes in and we throw in our hops for a one hour boil. With 15 minutes to go, we will set that spider down in the middle of the kettle and put in our wort chiller. The wort chiller goes in at 15 minutes just to make sure it has plenty of time to sanitize. We're also throwing in a whirl flock tablet. While that finishes up its boil, we're going to go ahead and scald some beet juice. The original recipe calls for roasted beets in secondary. I decided to do scalded, slightly caramelized beet juice at flame out. That way I didn't have to mess with it as much. So I just poured it in here slowly, let it cook here and there. And then I poured in the last cup just to chill everything back down. In the end, that net us about one and a half cups from the original two cups of beet juice. That beet juice just went right in right after we killed the heat. And then I drained out our hop spider and got that wort chiller going. Once that came down around yeast pitching temperature, I went ahead and got that transferred off into a bucket. And then I killed my wort chiller and pulled it out of the brew kettle. And once I had that inside, I transferred it off to a nice big carboy, just in case I had a lot of krausen in there. 
and our gravity came out to 1.063. So just a little bit lower than what I would have liked. Then our yeast goes in and we let that ferment. It took only a little over three days for this to ferment, but I went ahead and left it in there another couple weeks so the yeast could finish up, clean up after themselves, and drop to the bottom. Then I transferred it to a keg, and after a few weeks, it was ready to taste. We are here, David's here. We're gonna taste the anti-imperial stout. The only real difference that I made to this versus the recipe that they provide mm -hmm. is they recommend an addition where you do roasted beets in secondary or in the keg. What did you use? I used beet juice, which okay. I slowly drizzled into a screaming hot Dutch oven. So it kind of caramelized as I poured okay. it in. Yep. And then I added that at flame out with the boil. Huh. Did, so, you, did you taste that before you put uh, it in there? Okay. I just believed. <laughs> Now you saw this, it had a, like just like a cap of foam. Oh, and it was it. dark. Like, yeah. it was real dark. I mean, I mean it is, is a, you can't see through it. No. It is black. That is dense. Yeah, so big shout out to the OKC Brew Shop because I sent them over the PDF that mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the awareness campaign provides. Mm -hmm. And it's all in like percentages. And so I said, Brynn, this is a five gallon batch. Perfect. They, they did all the math, all the conversion. They gave me like just the right amount of hops. So shout out to them for like doing all the brain work for me. All I had to do was brew it. So cool. Props. All right. All right. Bottoms up. That tastes like a weird Guinness. <laughs> like, I wondered if you were going to say Guinness. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's about. It's not quite as, as thick, and yeah. like it, it doesn't have the same mouthfeel, but it pretty much tastes like... There's like, so much chocolate on the exhale, though. Yeah, no, there's a ton. Like, I mean, this, you know, what's the, uh, Guinness does, I think, an extra stout. Mm. I think that's what they, what one of their lines is, and that reminds me of this, because it's a little smokier than, like, yeah. just normal Guinness. As you're taking it in, it's very smooth, it's very crisp. And then as you exhale, you get that big malty, mm -hmm. chocolatey, dark, yeah. somewhat coffee, kind of roasty coffee kind of note. I don't pick up much of the beet. No. If anything, maybe some earthiness. Yeah. I don't know how much I would want beet flavor to come through. Anyway. I mean, I'm not a huge beet fan. I mean, yeah. I'll eat them, but they're not my favorite. So maybe it's just, maybe if you're like a huge beet fan, you'd be able to pick it out, but. On the front, there is a not quite fruit, but not quite vegetable kind of. It's that earthiness that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And you can smell it. Like it smells mm -hmm. a little earthy, not in a bad way, but. Yeah, but there is a, a bit of a fruity, vegetable-y kind of thing at the front that's like mm -hmm. interesting. It's not, mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it a negative. It's unusual. I mean, I don't think that it's strong enough that like, let's say somebody produced this, right? You're not gonna put, has beets in it. Yeah, big big <laughs> yeah. cartoon beet on the yeah, label. Yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. But it, I think it... There's definitely something there that tells you that there's like something not typical right. in it. And I think it's like just enough I don't know how I don't know if I'd want to push it any further. And I like stouts. Right. And this is an this is an inoffensive. I think I trend toward milk stouts mm -hmm. or oatmeal stouts, something with a bit more viscosity, a yeah. bit more creaminess. And I think that's why I want that in here, but maybe that's not appropriate. This is drinkable, this is good. It's not bad. No. So I'm gonna tuck this keg away for a few months, but I do, again, want to recommend you check out the links on how to uh, get involved, how to donate mm -hmm. toward those charities. And uh, our hearts and minds are with the people of Ukraine, as well as those in Russia who are affected by this uh, situation. Mm -hmm. It's not good. It's, it's pretty crummy. And so anything we can do to raise awareness here on the channel, on the internet, uh, for those folks who are affected by this situation and encourage peace, we're here to do that. So cheers to y'all. Please stay safe. Please stay well and uh, drink responsibly. <laughs>